Every year, about 1.7 million patients participate in 80,000 drug company trials worldwide. And researchers are finding it harder and harder to attract and retain the number of patients necessary for all these trials. Here with the story is WSJ reporter Jonathan Rockoff. Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us. Great to be here. What are some of the reasons drug companies are having trouble getting all of these people in the trials? I mean, clearly a lot of people are needed. Well, first off, these trials are really important. What folks don't realize is for a drug to get on the market and to help patients, it first has to go through this testing, right? And as it turns out, it's getting harder and harder for the companies to recruit subjects into the trials. There are a variety of different factors, but a lot of them are just because of the drug companies themselves and how legalistic and bureaucratic they can be. Right. They have these lengthy consent forms that people need to read, and that can be really intimidating, especially if you have a serious illness, right? Sure. Another problem is that when you're in a clinical trial, you may not get the study drug, the drug that you want to get. You, know, you may be in the placebo group. You may group. be in the placebo group, so you're just right. getting a sugar pill, right? And right. so do you really want to take that risk? Yes, what are the, you know, how attractive are these trials for most patients? I mean, are these cases of terminally ill patients where they're willing to try anything, or, or is it not so clear cut? Well, it's really a range. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a great question because some of these trials just aren't very attractive to begin with. Right. But a lot of these trials are. And even in those trials, it can be very challenging for the companies to get patients into the trials. So for instance, in our story, we feature an Alzheimer's drug trial. Now, Alzheimer's is a terrible degenerative, neurodegenerative condition, right? And there are a lot of patients and their families who would love to get you know, some kind of treatment for the disease, and yet those trials are really struggling to get patients. And this has led to some very interesting partnerships, hasn't it, Jonathan? Great Tell segue. Us, yeah, <laughs> great segue. Tell us about the partnership with the drug company and Lyft. Right, yeah. So, I mean, so so Alzheimer's trials in particular have been have been really struggling with this because you don't need just the patient to go to the trial. You need their caregiver, the spouse or the son or daughter who is taking care of the patient, right? And there's a lot of people just don't have the time to do that. Or the resources. Or the resources right. or the capability. And so um, one of these drug companies, uh, it's called Axivant, which is conducting a, a clinical trial for an Alzheimer's drug, has decided we're going to try and re reduce some of the logistical hassles and we're going to use Lyft, this ride hailing service, to provide car service to and from the clinical trial site. And has that improved their retention of the of patients? They say it has. They say about 45 subjects so far have already agreed to participate in the trial or are participating in the trial because of the service. I talked to one family, it's a 78-year-old woman with Alzheimer's and her 81-year-old husband, he can't drive. So if there wasn't a, if there wasn't the service available, they couldn't participate in the Absolutely. trial. Absolutely. That sounds like a, a brilliant idea, frankly. What are some of the other ways drug companies are trying to attract and retain more patients? They're, they're cutting down on some of the paperwork as well? Right. But, yeah, another or, example is Eli Lilly and Company, which is a big pharmaceutical company based in Indianapolis. And, They've been thinking about this a lot, and what they figured was we need to make these trials or entering these trials less intimidating. One of the things they do is take these consent forms, which have gone, gotten bigger and bigger, and tried to cut them in, in half. Right. Another thing they do is they're running dress rehearsals of what it's like for a patient enrolling in a clinical trial to see where the bottlenecks are, where the obstacles are that would sort of deter somebody from participating. So they actually flew somebody, a patient, out to Indianapolis had them sort of walk through the trial to see, hey, is this um, is this workable or not? So the patient has a full picture of what they're getting into before. And this is just crucial for the drug companies, correct? This tends to happen in the phase three trials the most, where it's the most important, is that right? Well, the phase three trials are the most important because those are sort of the final stage of trials to determine whether the regulators are gonna approve a drug or not, right? right. Um, but it's it's throughout all, all the phases of testing, in fact. Um, it's just a big challenge for the whole industry. All right, Jonathan Rockoff, it sounds like they're coming up with some interesting partnerships to, uh, to help alleviate that. Thank you so much. Thanks.